I remember flying over this incredibly flat, wet territory with floating islands, and I thought to myself, where the hell are we? Like all good stories, the road is long from where Doug and I started to where we are here in the middle of Ibera. We were business people before, Doug having started the North Face and then Esprit, and I started working for Yvonne and Melinda Chenard, and we started Patagonia Company. In the early 90s, we both decided to leave that life and dedicate ourselves to protecting those things that we had come to love through our world of climbing and skiing and hiking. And we got started in Chile and created what is today called Pumalín National Park. And in 1997, someone invited us to come to northeastern Argentina and see if they might interest us in working here. And one of the stops was to the center of Ibera wetlands. We land out in what we came to know as San Alonso. I stepped out of the plane and thought, this place is hot, there were bugs, there were no landmarks. The only thing I wanted to do was get back on that plane and get out of here. But Doug really, just in those few hours, saw something that he never forgot. A month later, Doug came back and actually bought San Alonso, much to my surprise. And that's how we got started in the conservation of Ibera wetlands. As we began to work here, it was so evident so quickly that this was a gold mine of biodiversity and that much of it had gone extinct. And that's where we really began to open up a whole new area of our work, which was the rewilding of the places that we were trying to conserve. It was at this point when we began looking for people who had the inspiration, the background and interest to join us in creating what eventually became our rewilding project. I know about Doug Tompkins and Chris when I was working for National Park Service. I was the biologist trying to create new areas, new national parks, and he was uh, a person that dreams uh, about creating national parks. He had already created Monteleon, so when he offered me to work in Ibera, and I say yes, and I travel to Pumalín so to know how he was working uh, in conservation. And I saw that place, incredible rainforest and incredible mountains and flying with him. I, I thought I was in the paradise, a dream. And the dream comes true and we are here in Ibera now. In 2005, I was traveling through Pumalín in southern Chile. I remember being in a small cafe that that he was there and looking at a book called Conservation Land Trust, the first 10 years. I was looking at the pages and then I, I saw that they had a project in Ibera, North, northeastern Argentina, and that they said they were going to reintroduce six species of mammals. I remember reading jaguars, tapirs, peccaries, and I thought, wow, these guys are crazy. I mean, nobody has done this before. And at the same time, I was thinking, well, these guys, they, they can do it. And then I started thinking that maybe I could be part of that. ELT in Argentina have created and helped to create at least uh, three national parks, Monteleon National Park, Impenetrable National Park, Ibera National Park. And we have worked with others to create Patagonia National Park and we have enlarged Perito Moreno National Park. This is about land protection, but we have started a new movement that is rewilding the national parks. The rewilding program in Ibera from the beginning was a part of something much larger. I mean, it was kind of part of three legs. One was bringing back the Stiperid species, also creating this large park that will last forever and also working with local communities so they will benefit from both the wildlife and, and the park. 
here in Eberá, we also think that it's a great opportunity to get the people in the surrounding to get aware that they're, they have to be proud of this because this is a very special place. They have a great culture, they have a great uh, biodiversity and all the lifestyle of the, the, the people are uh, really adapted to this place because they, they manage very well the canoes. They always move with the cattle in the middle of the water. So it's a very special culture. Nobody can go in, inside the Steros without them. So we really uh, started to build a team with them and we learned a, a lot from them. And they also started to think that uh, they, love, they love the place and they wanted to preserve. So they became the best guards and they, they became the, the best uh, managers. When the CLTM encomienda to form a team of management of conservation, knowing minimum the territory, I automatically imagine a group of Iberians, of Lugareños, conocedores of the lugar, of the history, of the geography, of the culture, of the times, of the codes, something that is super important to be able to manage this immensity of hectares that we have today. Corrientes Province uh, suffered the, probably the worst defaunation process in northern Argentina. After several centuries of European colonization, because Corrientes is an old province in, in the Spanish Empire, several species of animals went extinct. They were hunted, their habitats were destroyed, and they were banished from the province. When we started with the, with the whole rewilding program, I mean, everything was kind of against us. I mean, there was no previous experience of reintroduction in Argentina or even in general in South America. So we had to convince authorities, society, even many ecologists, that it made sense to bring back a estirpated species. How could we start something so complex as bringing all these species back? The idea was to start with the easiest one. Giant anteaters are animals that are not hated or even loved by people. In many areas of other provinces in Argentina, people hunt the anteaters because they fight with their dogs. Um, they kill the anteater and sometimes they find the little cub on the back of the mother and they, they feel pity for the, for the baby, for the cub and they bring it to their houses, to their homes. The Centro de Rescate is a place where we receive the ositos that are rescued from the north of Argentina, which is the zone where there are still ositos. They are animals that, if not there was this project, they would end up dying. So, we are achieving a double objective, save animals that do not have a destination and, in addition, generate a new population. Anoche recibimos un osito, debe tener un mes de vida como mucho. Lograr que ese animal pueda salir adelante y estar sano y estar apto para poder liberarlo, ese es como nuestro objetivo en esta etapa. Y después ver que ese animal está libre y está en el campo y, y, y es parte de una población incipiente, es lo que para nosotros nos termina de dejar tranquilos de que las cosas se están haciendo bien. Esta semana hemos liberado a Añá, después de un mes en el corral de Presuelta. Los animales llegan a la isla, ahí los alimentamos de la misma forma que se alimentaban en, en la estación biológica. Cuando vemos que el animal está tranquilo, se ha adaptado ya a su nuevo hogar, abrimos las puertas del corral y el animal es libre. Durante dos años los monitoreamos, los semanalmente los visitamos, revisamos el arnés, comprobamos que todo está bien, que el animal esté en condiciones adecuadas de salud. En el caso de las hembras, a partir del segundo año y medio, tercer año, comenzamos a seguirlas con mayor frecuencia si cabe para chequear que, que las crías empiezan a nacer. The results we obtained with the Giant Anteater project really validated us with the scientific and conservation community. The next step, which was 
bringing back the pampas deer, which is a species that is more endangered in Argentina. Pampas deer used to be some of the most common mammals in Argentina. There used to be hundreds of thousands of them roaming the grasslands, the pampas of southern South America. It was the equivalent to the bisons in, in North America. They were vanished from most of Argentina because of habitat degradation and hunting. There are like 2,000 of them left in, Arge in Argentina and there were a few of them even left in Corrientes in our province. But they were in private ranches that were being changed into pine plantations very, very fast. We had to capture animals that were living free in these private ranches and then bring them to our properties that they were going to be turned into a national park. So it was kind of a rescue from an area in which they were not secured to an area where they will be conserved uh, forever or at least at the long term. Sin duda, tener una reserva como la que tenemos aquí en San Alonso, con estos ejemplares, en una zona controlada, monitoreada diariamente, es una seguridad, un comodín que tenemos ahí como para proteger la, la especie. Being able to establish new populations for giant anteaters and pampas deer allowed us to start building a real team, our own team for introductions. That's when we looked for Sebastián Di Martino, as a field biologist who had experience both in wildlife management and protected areas. We started planning right away the reintroduction of tapers and peccaries, which are two large herbivores that used to live in the area. The tapirs and the peccaries are still common in some parts of Argentina, but they have lost more than 50% of their distribution area in our country. We bring animals from zoos and wildlife rescue centers and we reintroduce them into nature. That's a very hard work because these are domestic or semi-domestic animals that need to be trained on how to find food, how to find refuge, how to survive in the wild. Los pecaríes empezamos el año pasado. Hasta el momento liberamos dos grupos. Eh, le hacemos un, un monitoreo continuo. Creemos que, o sea, por ahí la etapa todavía es un poco dura y no consiguen el alimento necesario o no saben dónde buscarlos. Entonces aún les seguimos suplementando, pero la idea de suplementar ahora es que ellos pasen el invierno con más fuerza y ver si alguna de las hembras está en gestación, que las crías se puedan desarrollar bien y para crías fuertes. Ahora nosotros nos quedamos con los pecaríes tomando localizaciones para saber naturalmente dónde ellos deciden estar sin interferencia de nosotros. Tapirs are the biggest terrestrial mammals of South America. We brought seven of them to Iberá in the last year. And here we are now with the first mother and her first calf to be born in Corrientes province in more than half a century. We found out that they used to be green winged macaws in Iberá. These spectacular birds were vanished from the area in the 1800s, mostly because their feathers are so spectacular that they were hunted and they were traded. Even in colonial times that, that was happening at big scale. We started thinking about bringing them back also to the area and they are important because they are forest builders. They disperse seeds and fruits from one patch to another and they promote the regrowth of the forest. They are also spectacular at, at a touristic level. People like to see them. Los animalitos estos vienen de zoológicos y no saben volar, no saben cómo convivir en el ambiente que los rodea. En la cuarentena se ve si no tienen alguna enfermedad o algo que se nos presente, si están bien, si están perfectos, los traemos para acá y empiezan su entrenamiento para poder ser libres. The system here in Iberá consists of isolated forest patches, so the birds have to be able to fly uh, pretty long distances in order, in order to have access to their food, and they have to be able to recognize it. So. 
the birds live in one cage and then there's a flight cage where they, they train how to fly. We are trying uh, to get the birds to be able to learn how to maneuver in the air and for this we put branches uh, in the way of their flight path. So they have to uh, make decisions in while they're flying to decide way, where they want to go. Other thing we are doing right now is training them uh, on recognizing and learning how to eat uh, native fruits. So for this we go around and collect them from the trees we, we find in the nearby forest patches. And this bird has been absent from Argentina completely, so this would be the uh, coming back of the species to, to the country. We already have a group of red and green macaws living free in Iberá. It's the first time that a species that went extinct in Argentina is reintroduced in our country. This verse generated a lot of expectations in the neighboring communities of Iberá, not only because it's wonderful to see them flying free, but also because they became a very important resource for ecotourism activities. Uh, we are doing this big, huge experiment here in Iberá, and it's not only about bringing back peccaries, tapirs, pampas deer, but bringing back a, a top predator like a jaguar. We have space, a lot of prey, and in a productive place as the wetlands, uh, they have to go well here. We don't have in Argentina any similar place to try to do this. The jaguar had a very big distribution area in Argentina, but at the end of the 19th century, this area started to reduce, and now we only have 200 animals surviving in our country. It became a critically endangered species. Restoring jaguars to Iberá was always part of the original vision, but this was a whole different challenge. Uh, large predators are typically loved or hated, so we had to assess how was the situation in, in the in the region. We found out that the Correntinos, they have this patriotic identification with jaguars because they see jaguars as a lost relative that connects them with their Guarani roots. El jaguarete es la especie más representativa de, de la historia correntina. Si uno le pregunta a un correntino con cuál de todos estos animales se siente más identificado y es con el jaguarete porque es como que el jaguarete es fuerte, es, es bien macho como el correntino. There were no previous experiences of bringing back jaguars anywhere in the world. So we had to visit other projects in other continents, bring specialists who came here for free just to give us advice, and then decide a whole breeding center where the jaguars would live in the middle of an island that was in the core of Iberá and you could only access by plane or by boat. Building the jaguar breeding center was a epic story in itself. Lots of rain, people working under the rain from dawn to sunset, amazing work from the local gauchos and the way they took this as a source of pride. There was a moment in which the tractors couldn't get into the area, they would get stuck in the mud, so we had to work with ox carts, bringing all the materials. In Iberá, we have a very big breeding center for showers with two males and two females. We expect them to breed, and when the female gets pregnant, we move her to a very big pen of 1.5 hectares, where she will have their calves and she will raise the calf with no contact with humans, so they can be reintroduced. When the cubs are about a year old, they will move on their own, without their mother, to a huge area, a 30 hectare big enclosure. It's quite important the size of this area and that gives the jaguars the opportunity to know before being released all the different habitat types of Ibera. We have the big forest which is very typical for this area. We also have a big tall grassland and then most important of all we have a big lake. 
When the first jaguar arrived to the breeding center, the response of the neighboring communities was phenomenal. School children and neighbors from San Miguel community, they were waiting for the animal on the streets like they were waiting for a star, uh, for a long distance relative that had been away in the area for decades. El Parque Ecoturístico de Libera es una oportunidad maravillosa para la provincia de Corrientes y para toda la República Argentina, que va a dar una posibilidad de, de vida, de trabajo, de empleo y de calidad de vida a muchísimas personas que viven allí dentro de esas 700.000 hectáreas. Yo, digamos, de que nací no vi eso viso. Entonces ahora me presiona un poco de verlo de muy cerca. Me encanta de, de progresar de vuelta. Eh, lo, los vicios, por ejemplo, el yaguareté, el la guaraguazú, los hormigueros, el venado de la pampa, tenerlo dentro del parque. Eso es importantísimo. Ojalá con, con este Iberá, agua brillante, podamos captar la atención de, del mundo entero para que vengan a ayudarnos a, a proteger y a cuidar tanto lo natural como lo cultural que tenemos. When I came here in 1975, I was here only briefly. What's lovely is to come back and see all the progress in conservation. Now these animals are being brought back with reintroduction programs. And the jaguar was wiped out in so many parts of Argentina. And here's this marshland with all this, this food for jaguar. So bringing the jaguar back will be a tremendous achievement for conservation as well as for the country. When we started working here, the people thought we were, uh, they were, they were afraid of us. Since that, the idea of passing to the government all these huge place here in Neverá uh, have changed all the perceptions that the people have about Doug Tompkins and Chris Tompkins. We have been able to establish a new population of five species. Uh, they really think we are, we are, we continue to be a bit crazy, but a good crazy <laughs> guys that uh, really want to change uh, the planet. If I look now at what, what we achieved these years, beyond the populations that we established, what, I, what it comes to my mind is the team, the team we've been able to create. I look at Sebas as new program coordinator, planning new reintroductions, not only in Iberá, but in other parks. I mean, all these guys coming from Corrientes province, from Argentina, from other countries, these guys who were trained as cowboys, as gauchos, Now they are working as park rangers in the national park. All this passion, all this energy, all this know-how, and what I think is, wow, this is just the beginning. I mean, this is the beginning of something great. Here we are on the day we're bringing yet another Jaguar to San Alonso to the Jaguar Breeding Center. This is a big day for us. This represents more work than we could ever have imagined. I'm amazed by what these teams have accomplished. But then I turn around and I look forward and I think, oh my God, we have so much to do. At least now, we know so much more. We work more wisely. We work with more confidence because that's what 25 years of results give you. And I think back to 1997 when Doug and I first came here and I couldn't wait to get back in the airplane and take off again. And who would have guessed that this would become the very place, the heart of where we learned the most. Thank God Doug saw what he saw and I marvel at how prescient he was in what could happen here, what he saw those first days in San Alonso. <laughs>